Don't let the complexity of this motion design piece fool you. The core idea is actually very simple. A linear array of cylindrical shapes. Each cylinder revolves around itself in the opposite direction from the previous and the radii vary along the path to create those wavy intersecting patterns. Finally, the color gradient is driven by the curve factor along those paths. And that's all there is to it. If you're interested in the details of how to build this from scratch, follow me. There's usually more than one way to build something in geometry nodes, so you're guaranteed to learn a new thing or two. Let's start with the mesh circle. This will serve as the base of the cylinders. Leave the radius to 1, but lower the points to 10. From the Fill menu select Triangles. We're interested just on the inner cross sections, so let's separate those from the outer edges. Add a separate geometry node and set it to work on edges. The edges we need to keep are the ones which share more than one face neighbor. Feed a face neighbors field to the selection socket and insert a greater than operator. Increase the B input value to 1. We are now left with just the inner cross section edges of this circle which will convert to curves. These will be the profile curves that we will loft along the poles array. Let's build that next. Add a mesh grid. Set the dimensions to 2x2 two two and the divisions to 10x46. This will be the basis for the parallel linear curves. I could have started with a single curve and instanced it to form a linear array, but as I mentioned earlier, there is usually more than one way to do things in geometry nodes. Add a separate geometry node and set the domain to edges. We'll separate the vertical edges from the horizontal ones. For that, feed an index field into the selection socket. We want to select just the edges whose index number is less than the total number of points minus the vertex number in the x direction. Get the total point number with a domain size node. Feed an integer node to the vertices x socket of the mesh grid and subtract this integer from the total points number. You have now the option to use just the horizontal or the vertical edges as the axis of the cylinders. Now convert these edges to curves. This method works with the mesh grid as well as other grid-like meshes generated from the curve to mesh node. Feed both geometries into a curve to mesh node. You can clearly see that the cylinders overlap. The first instinct might be to adjust the profile circle radius, but instead we'll control the shape using the point radius along the linear curves. Those wave-like shapes are hints to use a sine function, driven by a factor field for each curve. We're still not there yet. The sine function expects values from 0 to a full circle and returns values from negative 1 to 1. This is currently not the case. The factor field values are in the range from 0 to 1. But we can easily map it to our needs. Multiply the factor by tau. We're in fact not limited to just one full circle. We can have more than one. Now let's adjust the values returned from the sine function. Insert a map range node. Instead of 0 to 1, set the input range from negative 1 to 1. Leave the minimum output range to 0. There is no point having negative radii. And manually adjust the maximum output range. Temporarily set it to 0 0.1. Each cylinder radius is now shrinking and expanding in wave-like shapes, but we should offset every other wave to have them fill the gaps. By how much? One half circle would do. Add a value node, set it to pi, and add it to the tau multiplication. But instead of adding pi to everything, we should filter just the splines with an even index number. How do we do that? Insert a multiply node and connect an index field to the empty socket. The curve radius is a point attribute, so this node, the index, currently returns a point index. Insert an evaluate on domain node and set it to interpolate the index field based on the spline domain. 
to filter out just the even index numbers, get a floored modulo node and set the second input value to 2. See? Every other cylinder is now offset by half a circle. Readjust the maximum output range to close the gaps. Let's now animate the radius. We will subtract time from the factor field. Feed a scene frame node into the empty socket. Divide the current frame value by the total number of frames in the scene. This should return a value from 0 to 1 as we scroll across the timeline. As a security measure, add a fraction node at the end. This makes sure that the result never exceeds 1. You could also have used a map range node. I'm just showing different methods to achieve the same thing. Hit play and observe the moving waves effect created by expanding and shrinking the point radii for each curve. Let's animate the cylinders rolling also. Open some space in the node tree and insert a set curve tilt node. As I have already explained in earlier tutorials, this node rotates the normal vector around the tangent direction for each point. These following steps are not too different from what we just did earlier. Divide the frame number by the total number of frames and get just the fractional part. Multiply the result by tau and hit play. The cylinders now rotate as well, but they all rotate clockwise. To break this uniform pattern, let's have every other one switch direction. Insert yet another multiplier and feed it the spline index number, immediately followed by a floor modulo with a value set to 2. This will return a 0 or 1 for each consecutive spline, which in Boolean terms means false or true. Insert a switch node and set the false and true values to negative 1 and 1 respectively. Hit play and see neighboring cylinders rotate in opposite directions. This may not be so obvious if you don't have the wire overlays turned on, but to have it visible in render, let's add some colors. We'll do this for each spline segment of the profile curve. Insert a store named attribute node, set the domain to splines and name it simply color. Feed in an index field and divide it by the total curves number. Add a domain size node after the mesh to curves and set the domain to curve. Divide index by this value. Add a set material node at the end of the tree and select a material from the drop down menu. Now hop over to the shader editor, add an attribute node. This will read the color attribute we stored earlier on each profile curve that following the curve to mesh node is propagated on every point of the resulting geometry. Feed the factor into the base color and insert a color ramp. To save time I've gone ahead and added some color stops distributed them evenly from the left using the Tools menu on the node and colored them. Switch the 3D view to Render mode, hit Play and enjoy the looping animation. This is where I leave you. From here on experiment on your own. If you want to support me go ahead and download the scene file. You'll find the link on the video description. If you learned something new or you like the video, share the knowledge. It will surely help someone else in his work and at the same time grow this channel.